What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show coming at you over the digital airwaves of YouTube at the very least three days a week. Thank you for joining me. I know I got a lot of stuff to get into because Super Bowl 58 is almost upon us right here from Las Vegas, Nevada. But I got a special guest and, and, and he's special to y'all. He gets on my damn nerves because he ain't been cracking on y'all for a damn near 25 years. He got jokes for me all the damn time. Long before y'all were teasing me about my hairline, this brother was. Long before you were teasing me about me being skinny, this boy was. When I got fat and out of shape, he pointed that out too, okay? Every little thing that's wrong with me, this brother finds out. But I love him anyway. Former star quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles, obviously. One of the great, great quarterbacks in franchise history. One of the great quarterbacks in NFL history. The one and only Donovan McNabb. What's up, big time? How are you, man? I'm doing well, thank you. Oh, that's what we're doing. <laughs> that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Yeah, give me the Barry White voice. <laughs> I, I, I mean, is there some podcast that you got? What is the, the five pieces, that's what it's called? What's it called? That, that's, that's how you're going to do me with the I, five I, piece? I, I, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. It's I mean, the five spot. The five spot. Oh, no, the okay. five spot. You know Streaming what I'm see, on YouTube I, I see, and see, Spotify. See, see, see his, the, the publishers, they, they're all looking at me like that. I did that on purpose. I know to get on his damn nerves. Yeah. You understand? Because that's what I do when it comes to Donovan McNabb. How you? How do you enjoy doing it, man? You know what I enjoy? It's, it's, it's You know, I love doing TV. I love doing radio. I get right. a chance to talk all sports. Right. You know, control my own content. Do it from the house. Right. You know, and the main thing about it is you're hearing a perspective from someone who's actually played, mm -hmm. no bias, and just giving it to you straight and forward. Right. Did you foreshadow, I mean, did you foresee yourself doing it this way where you'd have your own podcast and you'd basically be unleashed to talk as much as you like to talk? Because even though you like to talk, it's it's a select few people you like to talk to. You don't like to talk to just anybody. You understand what I'm saying? That is correct. That's right. That is correct. So... Talk about this, what your vision for it is all about. You know what? It's it's, it's one in which I, I got into the field because it was available. And it also gave me the opportunity to control my own content. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about different topics, you're giving your own input the way you want to say it, mm -hmm. how you want to say it. Instead mm -hmm. of, you know, you're getting a wrap up. Right. Let's, let's bring it down. Not that right. whole deal. But the whole thing for me is it's exciting uh, because I can control who I bring on as far as my guests is concerned. Mm -hmm. We can mm -hmm. talk about different topics, mm -hmm. get their input, and they, mm -hmm. they can feel comfortable and free mm -hmm. of what they want to say mm -hmm. uh, and how we put it out. Well, who do you like talking to? I mean, other than Stephen A. I mean, because we know that. I mean, who, who's that? You don't like talking to anybody more than you like talking to me. Outside of me, who is it that you enjoy talking to most? Well, you know what? I've had guests on, especially this week. I mean, We've had Anthony Munoz on. Okay. Um, I love to talk to the alums, the guys who have played the game, get their perspective of how the game has changed, right. where we are and how they're going to continue to grow, what they can do differently. You ask the younger guys now, they just don't know. They're enjoying the moment. Right. And so when it comes to how much they're getting paid and, and their precision, position and where they are right now in the organization, you want to get that perspective because they need to get that guidance from the guys who have done it. Mm. And a lot of the younger guys shut us out until they go through bad times and then they won't help. Why do you think they shut you out at the, at the in the initial stages? Well, I think a lot of egos. Mm -hmm. um, some think that we're, we're trying to get something out of them. Mm -hmm. um, and now that we're in the media world, as you know, they think that we're trying to get some type of topic or some type of thing that to get us some likes or some clicks. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's, that's never the case. When you look at the game right now, the state of affairs that exists right now, I mean, Patrick Mahomes is considered the creme de la creme. Uh, he's a black quarterback in the National Football League. He's a two-time champion, two-time league MVP, been to three Super Bowls, six straight AFC title games and what have you. We're talking about him like it's a foregone conclusion that he is the greatest to have ever done it. How do you feel? Are you comfortable with that moniker being attached to him? I'm not comfortable with that. Why not? I think he needs more years. Okay. Um, for him to at least be in the same conversation of Joe Montana and, and Tom Brady, mm. you need to at least play 14, 15 years. And with that 14, 15 years, if he continues to to go at this pace where maybe 14 years he goes to seven, okay. seven Super Bowls. Right. Now, if he wins five out of the seven, four out of the seven, yeah, he's still in that conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think his numbers of how the game has changed now, his numbers will probably surpass Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, touchdowns, his yards, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I think he may surpass Tom. But when it comes down to that situation where you're talking about the actual GOAT, it's about championships. But why the marriage to years? Like, what if this guy ended up winning five Super Bowls in his first 10, 11 years in the league? That still doesn't equate to 14, 15 years like you initially alluded to. Right. What's the marriage to years as you as you It's as longevity. It's longevity. It, it's kind of hard to put somebody in that position when they've only played 
a certain amount of years. Mm-hmm. Now, success is everything. Obviously, team, you need team, you need coaching, you need the right players, uh, and you need a little bit of luck on your side at times to get you over that hump. But I think as far as where we're comparing it and who we're comparing them to, mm-hmm. it's hard to have a guy that's played 20 plus years. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden we're putting a guy that's only played 12, 13, 14 years in that conversation. Educate us about the changes that have taken place in the NFL. When you look at the National Football League today and the way that it's played, right. compare it for those of us who don't comprehend and do, who don't understand how it's different from when you played, being drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles 1999 and what have you, number two overall pick. When you look at the way the game was back then and the right. years that you played to the way it's played now, crystallize for us the difference. Well, the physicality of the game, first and foremost, when it comes down to how they play and what calls they're making. A lot of the hits to the head, we weren't getting that. Mm. A lot of shots to the thighs, shots to the, the right above the knee, we weren't getting that call. Now, mm. it wasn't until, I think, 2007 when Tom got hurt and then the Brady rule came 2008, up. yes. Yeah, and so that rule didn't apply for everyone because mm. I didn't get that call. Wow. Uh, I've had a referee tell me, uh, I thought you were running. <laughs> and, like you thought you were running. I thought you were running, and I'm like, uh, I'm back behind the offensive line. I'm right. not running nowhere. Right. Um, but again, you know, I think the game is changing in this regard because one, there's there's no return game. Like what we've seen with Devin Hester, who congratulations, you know, being inducted to the Hall of Fame. Right. The return game is kind of non-existent because right. kickers are kicking the ball out of the end zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, to be honest with you, punt return game is not what it, it was. So you can flip the field and get good field position. Um, I talked about the, the calls and the penalties and things of that nature. Now, all of a sudden, they're airing the ball out a lot. So rec- quarterbacks are throwing for 5,000 yards like it's almost 3,000, how we did it. Um, so receivers are getting close to 2,000 yards. Guys are coming up with 140 catches a season. Yep. Um, and so the running game, which the running backs are taking more of a hit now because they're not able to get the bag because, you know, they're not getting paid for their work. That's right. And so... Um, so everything Austin Eckler and those boys protest about that last year. They were year. correct. That's right. They were correct. I had a chance to talk to Marshall Falk on my show, mm-hmm. uh, and he talked about it a little bit about that. That mm-hmm. the focus hasn't been on the running back, but when it comes to these particular games in the playoffs and in the Super Bowl, you got to run the football. Right. And so I think what we're seeing from the evolution of where the game is from the running back standpoint is if you can't catch the ball out of the backfield and run the football north and south, you're kind of irrelevant. Mm-hmm. So Christian McCaffrey is the ideal model. At, in this day, in today's it, game, from the running back it's, spot, it's based funny on what you, you just say explained, that because we 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 forgot about Saquon. That Saquon got hurt, yes. but Saquon was that type of guy. Well, part of the reason uh, we forgot about Saquon because the Giants don't win. Well, I wasn't gonna say that, but well, you know, I just you said did. it. I okay. mean, they don't win. Ain't nobody think about the damn Giants. That's their problem because all they got is Saquon Barkley in the bag of chips. That's all they have. You got fired up on that one. You yeah, know, yeah, everything yeah. okay? I, 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 mean, I feel I feel he's been abused. I feel he's been abused and unappreciated. <laughs> I mean, I think he's just been thrown to the wolves. They don't give him any help. Well, I mean, that's pretty much all they have out there in New York. That's and right. so they didn't utilize him the right way, which is good for him because he still got tread on the tires to go somewhere else. Right. Um, but I think what we're seeing from the game right now, if the game continues to evolve, meaning continue to take things out of the game, mm-hmm. it's going to almost be like the Pro Bowl, 7 7 mm. So the state of affairs, as we look at the National Football League in today's day and age, I think that some could easily argue that it's not better. Right. But the public would say, the league would tell us rather, that the public is happy with it because it's more offense, defenses have been compromised, we're seeing more points, that makes it for a more exciting brand of football, and as a result, everybody benefits from it. Are you of that mindset? No. Uh, I think what the NFL is looking for is their example of it is because it's safer. Mm. They're trying to keep the the players healthy. Mm -hmm. Uh, And in regard, I think if you're trying to be cautious, that's when you get hurt. You get hurt because you're you're trying to pull up instead of just going full bore and get there, protect yourself, get down and get back up. Uh, so the game is, I think, has changed where we're looking more as to please the fans when the fans was enjoying the, the game and what it was. Mm. Uh, so now we're we're trying to pull and and add few things that's that's not suitable to the players that are coming in. Mm. And so the players that are there now it's almost they become dinosaurs and they're looking for newer and and fresher pieces. Mm. Mm. I got you. Let's crystallize. Let's get into the Super Bowl 58 a little bit. Kansas City versus San Francisco. Brock Purdy, Cam Newton has been on the record talking about game manager, 
as opposed to a game changer, took some heat for it. I don't think he deserved to take heat for it. Uh, he's absolutely right. I, I don't think, well, first of all, he's qualified. Former league MVP, took a right. team to the Super Bowl with less. And I think that that's, that's one of the things, that's why I said, if I had any role for you getting any cynicism over that, I apologize on national television this morning. But when he said what he said, and you said that he didn't say anything wrong, illuminate for us why he was not wrong. Highlight what we see in Brock Purdy that we may not be realizing that we actually see. Well, let, let me just start it out right from the very beginning okay. um, that when someone makes a comment like that, now all of a sudden people go personal to him. Yeah, that's wrong. That's bad business. That's wrong. That's bad business. That's bad business. Talk about what he said, talk not about, about him. Talk about what he said, not don't talk about him. Right. Because he never said anything personal about anybody else. Absolutely. Uh, secondly, let's go into it. We're all game managers. Okay. As a quarterback, we're a game manager. We're able to control the football, control the clock, control the chains, control the game. Mm. That's what a game manager does. Mm -hmm. Now, that's just being smart from the pocket and went outside the pocket. And he was absolutely right the way he explained it, because we are. Now, game changer, you got to be able to make two, three plays in that game that's going to get you over the hump to get you there. Mm. Now, this, has Brock Purdy showed that? He showed it a little bit in the last game. Mm. Got outside the pocket, pick up the first down with his legs. Something we haven't seen from him. Right. In the postseason against Green Bay and against Detroit. In, in, in the regular season. Right. I mean, one thing we got to understand about Brock Purdy is Brock Purdy's coming off a, a, a tough injury. Right. Surgery. Got you. And bounce back. Mm -hmm. And so... No one talked game manager until Cam said it. So now it becomes a topic. Now we're dissecting everything that's going on. There are a lot of game managers in the league, but there's only about four game breakers, mm. game changers. Give me the four game changers. Well, Patrick Mahomes. Okay. Lamar Jackson. Okay. Uh, I mean, we the one person we can really add in that regard, but he's not there yet. I think C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud's a stud. C.J. Stroud is in there because what was the question for him coming out of college? Right. His mobility. Yeah. When he showed it against Georgia, nobody really wanted to talk about it. Mm -hmm. He actually should have been the first pick of the draft. Not, nothing against mm -hmm. Bryce Young. Right. But he proved it. And now we see where he's at right now. Mm. But I think all in all, Jalen Hurts. Okay. Um, the thing that, that has to happen for all of them is there has to be consistency to play from the pocket. Mm. And when you can play from the pocket, then you can get outside the pocket and do what you do. Some people look at Jalen Hurts and they look, look at the drop off this year from last year. I'm looking at the fact that he lost his offensive coordinator. Um, but but he still had A.J. Brown. He still had Devontae Smith. He still had Dallas Goddard before he got hurt against the Dallas game. Um, you still had Nick Sirianni as your coach. Um, but he lost his offensive coordinator, and I can respect that. But they said there was a drop-off because we saw more film on him. And what he was getting away with last year, we were going to be better prepared for this year. That you have some people within the NFC East who will remain nameless that have said that when I it love, came to Jalen Hurts. There you go. What the, were your thoughts about wrong. that? They're wrong? They're, they're wrong. I mean, one thing that you got to understand is when you play in the Super Bowl and you, don't lose, and you lose the game, mm -hmm. expectations are so high for you to get back there. Okay. And so now what we've seen in the beginning, and they changed the offense a little bit where they didn't run the football as effectively as they should have. Mm -hmm. They had a thousand-yard rusher. DeAndre Swift was one of the top five rush, running backs in the game. Mm -hmm. They stopped running the ball effectively and giving them the ball. Mm -hmm. And so you have two running backs to him in game well. They should have got the ball to him where you're right. eliminating Jalen running 12, 15 times a game. Right. And so Dallas Guider should have been a little bit more involved in that offense. Mm -hmm. They started trying to feature, you know, A.J. Brown, which he's the number one receiver, but then Devontae exploded a couple games. Mm -hmm. And then he was non-existent in some. Right. And so there was no consistency on offense. Mm -hmm. But it really wasn't so much of the offense. I mean, the offense didn't play well in the first half of games, mm -hmm. which they ended up winning at the end of games. So all of a sudden they're 10-1 and one and then the bottom falls out. Okay. It all started by week six, week seven. Mm. that it started to fall apart. But winning cures everything where we don't ask the question or nothing. I remember Shannon said it a couple of times that he didn't think Jalen was playing very well. Right. It wasn't the Jalen that we seen last year, but things are different the next year. But they have to change and make the adjustments. And so that defense was pretty rough. Yes. Very. To say the least. Very rough. To say the Can't least. Can't lose Gardner Johnson. Can't do that. That's a big loss for them in their secondary Amongst other things. I mean, they lost that. him and Epps. They lost, okay. you know, they lost a linebacker. And then they kind of held on to a few guys mm -hmm. that they probably should have made some changes with. Lamar Jackson won league MVP last night. A lot of people, obviously most folks thought he deserved it. There was only one vote mm -hmm. against him, and that was a, a guy for Buffalo, in, uh, based out of Buffalo. Yeah. So we understand we voted for Josh Allen. We'll ignore him. Uh, but when you look at Lamar Jackson and the greatness that he exhibited during the regular season, do you let him off the hook for what transpired in the AFC Championship game? Or do you say, yo, that's a, that's a moment for you. You got to step up and handle that. No, you let him off the hook. Because? I think you should let him off the hook. Because? As I, in I, why? I, he's young. He's young. He's learning. 
we'll see how this offense evolves. Mm-hmm. Because the whole thing, this offense that came from Georgia, the offensive coordinator that came from Montana, Georgia yeah. was supposed to, we were supposed to get what we've seen in Georgia in the NFL. Doesn't always translate to the NFL. So what did he do? He resorted back to Lamar running the football. Mm-hmm. And so in that game, Lamar's going to learn from that game because all he needed to do was run the ball about three, three, four times in that game. That would have took them out of that defense, mm-hmm. which they brought a nickel in to stop Lamar from running, but they never ran the football. Wow. And so now you're getting caught in the trying to throw the football mm-hmm. and they look like they're playing man, but they still got one just spying on, on Lamar. I'm going to go back to the Super Bowl in just a second, but I wanted, I'd be remiss and neglecting to bring this subject up. Season started, there were 14 black quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Playoffs arrived, six of them were black. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Donovan McNabb, being the stellar quarterback that you were, black quarterback, I might add, mm-hmm. just disproving and debunking all of the stuff that historically has been thrown in a bunch of people's face about uh, the capabilities of a black quarterback. What did it make you feel like to see so many African-Americans at that position uh, excelling and being in a position to excel in the National Football League? Joy and appreciation. Because the game has changed. I've talked about it a lot of times. We've talked about this. Yeah. Um, when you look at the college ranks, every university has one or two. And it might be your starter. Mm. But then they're recruiting guys that look like me, that play like me. Mm. Because if you don't, you, you won't have a chance to win consistently. Right. And so that's now something that we have to look at as far as the draft is concerned. Because even in this draft, in the top four quarterbacks, three of them are black. Mm-hmm. And so the game has evolved from a, from a Pop Warner standpoint that now translate into the high school ranks. Mm-hmm. And then these kids are getting recruited to these Power Five schools. Now the transfer portal has become kind of rough because you get in the transfer portal, that mm-hmm. means you're going to get picked up anywhere. There you go. And you might be sitting. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love to see the evolution of where the game is from the collegiate standpoint mm-hmm. because these coaches know they have to get out in these inner cities and recruit these kids because you know he can come in and change your university. Damn right. Damn right. Donovan McNair right here with Stephen A. over the digital airways of YouTube. Before I let you get on out of here, Kansas City, San Francisco, how do you handicap this game? You know what? I look at it in a sense. Obviously, I think Kansas City will win because of Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is just like when 12 stood behind center in, in New England. When Tom was behind center, they felt like they had a great chance of winning. Same thing with 15. When 15 is on the field, you, you know he's going to make three or four plays. That's, that's going to be that game-changing play. Mm. It's just a matter of when he makes those plays. Right. Will it be off of your mistakes? Will it be off of your turnovers? Will it be your failure to convert in the red zone? And then all of a sudden he drives down. Mm-hmm. Prime example of what happened against Baltimore. They win the coin flip. Boom, they drive down the score. Now they ran a few wide receiver screens. Pacheco ran the football. Got Travis involved. Mm-hmm. But they methodically moved the ball downfield. Mm-hmm. The thing with Andy is Andy understands how to play playoff yeah. football. Your former coach in Philadelphia. He knows how to play playoff football. Mm-hmm. And so I think this game is going to be very similar to that first meeting that they had in Miami but it's all going to come down to what teams make the most mistakes. Mm. And you got an experienced player, an experienced team, a, a non-experienced player, mm. and a team that's been there. But that full team hasn't been there. But we'll see. I think Kansas City wins this game by double digits. I got Kansas City winning as well, but you got to stop Christian McCaffrey. You can't let him run over. But see, this is the thing. So do you decide to run Christian McCaffrey 25 times? No, but I decided to put the ball in his hands 25 times. I'll get well, ahead and throw correct. a screen, throw something. I'm so going to put the again, ball in his so, hands about so 20, 25 times. Ball. Yes. So that works in Kansas City's favor. Works in Kansas City's favor. If now you, you're going to bring Brock Purdy to drop back and throw the ball 25, 28, 30 times a game, yeah. it works in Kansas City's favor. Wow. Because now you're stopping the clock on incomplete passes. I got you. I got you. Five spot with Donovan McNabb. Outkick sports. Where can we, when can we hear it? Where can we hear it? Hold on, I'm going to need you to say that with a little bit of bass in your voice. The five I, spot with okay. Donovan McNabb, man. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, this, this I is mean, not good, you man. You know, when you say, yo, the Stephen, let me get to Stephen A. Smith show, you know. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't get relaxed when you say my show. You know? I, I'm just saying, you know. You know? I mean, hey, all right, all right, I got you. The five spot. There you go. With Donovan McNabb. Okay. I don't know if I like that. That was a little bit too much energy. But uh, yeah, you can find that on that. YouTube, yeah. streaming on YouTube and Spotify. It's under Outkick. The Five Spot is going all season. Next show will be on Tuesday. The Five Spot the, with Donovan McNair. The, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <my God. laughs> Oh, only you. Yeah. Only you. Back with more of the Stephen A. Smith Show in a minute. 